Poo, which is a debate on clauses 24 to 26. And the question is that part two stand part. Mr Chair. Uh, Grant Robertson. Thank you uh, very much, Mr Chair. Uh, part two uh, essentially is a clause that amends um, the Education Act. Uh, it, it, it is not um, a particularly long part, but it is an important part because this is the bit where we, uh, we move on from uh, the previous way in which this uh, industry training and apprenticeships have been managed. And, and it is important, Mr Chair, that we, uh, when we're doing so, we look at the history of, of what was good about industry training and apprenticeships under this legislation and ensure that we are, we're not uh, are changing that in such a way uh, that that undermines uh, the purpose of industry training. The, the biggest issue here was, uh, in when this was debated around uh, the select committee table, was the question of fees and the payment of fees uh, for the registration of, of, of um, industry training. And there was a concern raised by several submitters that, uh, that the fees that were being paid may increase, they may become uh, uh, significant enough that they would impact on trainees themselves. And clearly, we don't want to see that. We want to make sure that industry training remains uh, open as possible uh, to, to all those who, who want to undertake it. Uh, Mr Chair, and that's covered by um, clauses 25 and, and 26, which amend uh, aspects of the Education Act around the way in which registration fees will be set and how they'll be paid. Um, it is important, Mr Chair, to note that uh, when the um, NZQA comes in, and this is clause 26 of the bill, when, when the NZQA comes in to undertake quality assurance activities, that um, those fees don't um, uh, represent a, a, a huge uh, burden upon the industry training organisations. Several of the ITOs and, and related bodies who came to the committee were concerned that this, there was a, the potential for this to become a very uh, open uh, uh, um, clause, and, and we were again assured by the officials that that would not be the case. Uh, but, Mr Chair, it, it is a concern for a lot of people that NZQA performs an important role in our system, but equally is perceived, I think, by many people as merely uh, coming along and extracting money from those organisations rather than providing a huge amount of value. It's important in this case that there is absolute transparency around what it is that NZQA is doing and why uh, a body might be paying fees to it as they're required to under 20 uh, hours. Section 26 of this bill. Uh, what we heard from submitters that they were concerned that often the exercise of NZQA coming in and working them was some kind of tick box exercise. It was some kind of simply filling in a form and that was enough. There has to be more in terms of added value uh, from NZQA's involvement with industry training organisations than that. There needs to be a sense that NZQA is supporting uh, the delivery of high quality training through the setting of high quality standards. That's the purpose. And if they come in and they have conversations like that with uh, the bodies that they uh, are paying fees to them, then there won't be any, any grudge held about paying that fee. Where the industry training organisations feel that they're simply part of a bureaucratic exercise that's about filling in forms and it doesn't seem to add value is where the problem arises. And that's the concern that was expressed to us, Mr Chair, in the Select Committee about part two of the bill, was what's the added value here from NZQA? And it was a little disturbing, I think, to see the level of cynicism among a number of the, uh, those representing ITOs about NZQA and about what NZQA would do. Uh, and I think we have to take that cynicism seriously. As I said in my earlier contribution, Mr Chair, by no means do I believe that ITOs should be without scrutiny from NZQA. It's a large amount of taxpayer funding that's going to ITOs, and even more concerning, Mr Chair, would be when this money was directed uh, to individual businesses under the clauses that have just been passed. Uh, that would be of even greater concern that we need NZQA in there making sure that there is a level of quality assurance uh, available. That's what the fees are paid for under Section 26. We want to see as much transparency as possible in what NZQA does so that those fees can be justified. And it is important, uh, Mr Chair, that 
PNZQA takes heed of the things that were said during the select committee process about this. We, we do believe the fees are justifiable because they are performing a service, but they must be able to show the added value there, and unfortunately for a lot of ITOs, they can't see that. I call uh, Dr Megan Woods. Thank you, Mr Chairman.